So this is my version of the Hypercube Evolution. I recently built this. It took a couple months with on and off working on it. It's about 60% custom parts and the rest were stuff I downloaded online. Like this for example. This uh, Samsung Tab A. I use it as an interface and I made this uh, this stand hold thing. This stand for the tablet which I designed myself. I designed these little corner brackets and these as well. These I found online. These I found online. This I found online. This I found online. These I designed myself. Um, the entire print head I designed myself. Took a lot of tries to get it right. So I'm using a the 12, the linear rail XM12, something like that, as the entire X carriage, instead of using a 2020 um, support there, a 2020 extrusion, I just use the entire bar itself. And this is based on the design I got from this thingiverse file. And then I just made my own carriage for it, basically. The back is where I store all the electronics, and it's very neatly mounted on the wall. And then it's just an acrylic panel, which I can show you more of. Here's a better look of the electronics. I tried to make it as clean as possible. In this picture, it's a 12 volt power supply, but I actually changed it to a 24 volt. And I use these little uh, box things I forgot what they're called to actually hide the wires in it and those really made a huge difference in cleaning up how the end result looks. Highly recommend those. Uh, this is me just showing how the uh, acrylic sheet in the back slides down. Uh, it's only connected from the top and the bottom that's why you see that cut there because uh, it's kind of hard to do it with one hand. Uh, that covers it and it's very clean. I like this much better than what I did the first time because this is actually the second iteration of this printer. The first one I did it with um, linear rod, linear rods, but uh, I didn't like it. It was harder to work on. If I needed to change something in the X carriage, it was much harder to work on and take apart. It required two people just to hold on to this one part here but in the linear rail version so I didn't like that and anyway it was also twisting a little bit there was like a torsional force on the X carriage which was causing prints to come out really unsquare I mean here's here's an example of the prints this was on version 1 of the printer in gray and this was this version in red I mean you can see just how unsquare this is. It's literally like a rhombus. And the print quality was really bad. Lots of layer shifting. Really bad. I, I did not like it. I mean, look at that. It's like the X part of this is like denting out. It's hard to see here. And then look at this version. And this was pre-tuned. I need to print another one again to see what it's like now because this definitely will come out better now. I did a lot of tuning, spent like two weeks tuning this thing and uh, I'm gonna make a separate video about that whole process and just walk you through it but the I originally this is by the way this project I did it because it was like a CR10 I had the original CR10 printer and I, my goal was to convert that into a Core XY printer that I could dedicate as a large format printer using a 0.8mm nozzle. Because I have the Bamboo X1 Carbon, the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, and that's amazingly good for high detailed 
fast prints, but I wanted something just as fast, or or at least close to being that fast, but for large um, nozzles and a large build area, because I want to build bigger parts, right? This is a 300 millimeter bed, whereas the Bamboo X1 has a 250 millimeter bed. And I have to say, after doing this, if I had to recommend somebody else, like, should you build this or should you just buy this? To be honest with you, I think you should just buy this. Buy the Bamboo Lab one. It's much better. And honestly, the print times are comparable. I can't, on this one, I can't get up to the accelerations that I got on, that the Bamboo Lab gets. The Bamboo Lab gets like 20,000 millimeters per second squared acceleration with insane speeds too. This hybrid cube that I built, originally it started at a 2000, roughly 1500, 2000 acceleration. And then after I did input shaping with the accelerometer here, after I did that, I managed to get it up to 7000 acceleration, which made a huge difference. But once I started going past that to 8,000, 10,000, the X carriage itself started like skipping and twitching. Now, I'm sure part of that is partially due to this, that these are toothed uh, pulleys here, which they're not supposed to be. And you can see that it's actually grinding it. Let me try to get a better. actually see that it's grinding up the belt there so I got these new pulleys which are toothless pulleys to put in that are, that are actually the right size because I originally intended to put those in but the ones I got every time I ordered them they said three millimeter bore on it but it ended up being five millimeters so I couldn't use them so in the effort of just trying to get the printer running, I just put those temporarily. So I can actually tune it in the meantime while I waited for those parts to come. Um, so yeah, I mean besides that, I couldn't really go past 7000 acceleration. But uh, I did a max speed of 250 millimeters per second on actual speed. I could go to 300, but it, I started seeing some issues after that, so an optimal speed at a 0.4 millimeter nozzle was 250 millimeters per second with a 7,000 millimeters per second squared acceleration. But when I went up to the 0.8 millimeter nozzle, I had to reduce that down to uh, an 80. You can see it here. It's not actually updated, but uh, I needed to put it to 80 millimeters per second for the max speed. because the, I still kept the 7,000 acceleration though, but in general on my Cura settings, I lowered the print speed by a lot, by like, I kept it around 60 to 80 max, because with the 0.8 millimeter nozzle, uh, it's literally putting out four to eight times more material in volume than the 0.4 millimeter nozzle. So I'm gonna show you in a clip how fast this spool it turns because of how much material is being put out at a time. I can show you examples of this is what this is what a 0.4 millimeter nozzle print looks like. And this Benji came out pretty good. This was post ringing tuning. It still had a little bit of ringing in it but overall is pretty good and then this is a 0.8 millimeter nozzle which this was like a two hour print well actually three hours because it, the lid was printed separately but uh I mean this was after lots of tuning so I think I pretty much got it down now in terms of the in terms of the uh, print settings and stuff but check out that quality. It's pretty good for the most part. I mean, I'm not trying to make this, I mean, you, the thing is with a high, a bigger nozzle, you're gonna see more artifacts and stuff, so I'm okay with that. 
I do still need to do some pressure advanced tuning but besides that there's not much else I can do to tune this anymore uh, there is one thing I need to do which is to tune actually two things I still need to tune the retraction settings and I need to uh, make an auxiliary fan which I'm gonna use these for in another video so this is a massive fan I already designed it um, you'll be seeing that in a new video um, so I have this ADXL uh, 345 accelerometer on the print head that I just have a wire going directly to the Pi that I just plug in I just plug in to do the tuning and then unplug it when I don't need it um, so that's how I do the input shaping this is a I forgot what it's called, but I'll put that extruder in the description. I actually got this specific one on Amazon. You don't need to do that, but I just wanted to... Uh, you can download and print yourself, which I actually did here on my 0 0.1. But that's because I had the gears and stuff already. These are just Bontech gears. So I didn't feel like sourcing them all. Uh, so I just, I just got a kit online came with the motor and all the gears and the screw thing and everything so that was fine um, I found these things online and I just modified them slightly um, just so that I can mount all the wires to them neatly on the side I printed these polycarbonate handles here which I found online and these are just to lift the whole printer polycarbonate is extremely strong and it's um, easily can handle the whole weight I literally can't break them with my hand. Um, so yeah, I have the this wiring loom up top here, the custom grating in the back with the fused power port. Um, yeah, this using polycarbonate for the belt holder here because that part uh, broke when I put it in ABS. I'm using an E3D Volcano hot end um, with these small fans and yeah so if you guys have any questions about this leave it in the comments and I can give you more details or maybe make another video about it I plan on releasing another video for the um, tuning guide not guide but just showing some of the stuff I did for tuning I'm gonna make another video for the fan exhaust project um, oh one thing I forgot to show here are these flags these are the um, end stop flags that I'm using for with these optical sensors that you can see here these are optical end stops so pretty easy to design the flags here the whole thing is printed in ABS, by the way. Pink ABS. Uh, these are Cobb LED strips that I mounted on here. And they're actually PWM controllable in the interface. So, yeah. Pretty happy with how this came out for the most part. Uh, I plan on printing some bigger stuff in the future. Some big projects and stuff. I... If I had any recommendations, I would suggest just getting a better print bed. I'm, I was using the CR10 bed, and that thing started warping in the center. So I had to put a glass over it to print, but printing on glass sucks. So I cheated, and I put the magnetic um, tape thing on the glass itself, and then just put the textured PEI sheet on the glass. So I thought I needed to clip it down but surprisingly it just holds itself down because it's not a bed slinger so there's no sideways forces it's just going up and down so it, it mostly holds itself but if I had to replace anything on this right now it, it would be the bed but it's it's kind of a pain in the ass to design the bed mount and I basically just got it right oh I, there is a there is a CR touch on here but I don't bed level with it I mean I don't um, home the z-axis with it I have two optical end stops on the back there with two flags so it actually 
it goes up one so if it's let's say it's slightly off angle it'll level the one side and this side will keep going until that levels out and then I do auto bed leveling and and then I manually bed level it too just to get it all flat and then you know the auto bed leveling mesh will automatically adjust it but um yeah this is pretty much it I wanted to make another thing to just hold this up uh, thinking about how I'm gonna do it but it's not a big deal right now but yeah anyway let me know what you guys think in the comments if you have any questions you can give any details about this project thanks hey guys just a quick update uh, hope you guys like that video um, just just subscribe for more because I have some future projects I'm gonna do like I'm gonna build an air scrubber with this huge blower fan um, some activated charcoal and these HEPA filters I'm gonna make a video about that as well as the auxiliary blower fan that's gonna go on the printer itself uh, the air scrubber will be controlled by the printer um, I could make it a separate thing but I think I'm just gonna power it off the printer and make it so that it um, it'll turn on when the printer's running uh, let me know if you guys want to see that and subscribe for you know future updates and that video to come I have some more videos in the works thanks